So in this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to create our first world, okay? We're going to create a world, and we're going to populate it with a couple of objects, and we're going to practice some basic controls on how to manipulate those objects. So first thing I want to do is create our new world. So I'm going to, I'll zoom up here above the file, and say I want a new world. I'm going to go to my templates here, and I want to pick a snow world for this particular exercise. So I'm going to click on the snow world, and I'm going to click Open. It's a very good idea as well, before you get too far into this, in case you do something wrong, is to save your world or in case your computer crashes or something like that. So I like to save always right at the very beginning. So I'm going to go File. I'm going to go Save World As. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. Save World As. And I want to save in a location that I know where it's going to be. In my My Documents, I have a folder called Alice. So I like to save in my Alice folder. All my Alice stuff goes there. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this Snowman Exercise. So I give it a name. I come over here and I hit Save. All right, that's all done. So now we're ready to add some objects in there. So in order to add some objects, what I go is I go to this Add Object button. I click Add Objects. Let's zoom out. Okay. And there's two folders here. One is a web gallery, which quite frankly doesn't have a whole heck of a lot in it. I think Alice had some plans on... on, uh, on I'm putting more things there. Everything we're going to work with is going to be from this local gallery. And if you want to find more objects, actually, if you go to alice.org, they have ones that you can download. But I'm going to go to the local gallery, and all these exercises are going to work with the local gallery. And the object that I want can be found in the person folder. All the objects are organized in terms of folders. And I want to scroll over to the people folder. They're all alphabetical. And what I want to do is, one of the people here is going to be a snowman. So I'm going to scroll along, again it's alphabetical, find the snowman. There's my snowman. And what I want to do is I want to add this snowman uh, object to my world. Okay. Two ways to do that. One is to click on it, like that, Okay, and you have a button here called Add Instance to this World. See right there. Okay, So I'm going to add instance to this world, and it does this little animation and adds a snowman. The second way to add a snowman is to simply grab the snowman class and drag him up into your world. And you get this yellow box, and this yellow box indicates where the snowman is going to go. So this is nice sometimes to be able to place the, snow, the, the, the person right where you uh, want it to be. So there's my other snowman. Now, I actually don't want two snowmans, so I want to delete one of these. A number of different ways to delete. Uh, one is you can select the object, and by the way, you can select the object in the view here, or you can go over here to the object tree and select the objects here as well. Both ways work exactly the same way. So if I select the object and then hit the delete button on my computer, it'll delete. I can right click on the object, and I can select delete from here. I can grab the object and drag it up to my trash. Oh, it's not going to work this way, sorry but it will work this way. I can grab the object from my object tree, and a lot of these objects have a little kind of a bumpy section. This is the section you can grab it from, and you can grab the object and drag it up to the trash can. There's another way to do it, and then the object is now gone. Right, so there we go. We got our one snowman. I want to talk about how do we manipulate the snowman. Well, the f most basic controls are over here. There's these mouse control ones. I, uh, zoom in so you can see them. There's the move up and down, a couple of rotate, well actually three different rotate buttons, a resize button, and a copy or clone button. So let's show what each of these do. So there's the move up and down. I can drag the object, move them up and down. Um, and by the way, I also want to show there's an undo button over here at the top left. Don't be afraid to play as much as you want with this. In fact, I encourage you to do so. You're going to learn, you can learn a lot more stuff than what gets shown in this course just by playing with it and seeing the different things you can do. So don't be afraid to have fun. And there's this infinite undo button that you can undo as many times as you want to just get it back to where you want it. And if you undo too far, like there's my other snowman back, I can redo as well. So you can get that back. Okay, we have a rotate left and right button, like that, so he spins like a top. We have a rotate forward and back button. We have what's called a tumble button, which actually combines those two rotations together. I think our snowman's getting a little dizzy. Let me do some undos and get the snowman back the way it was. We have a resize button, which allows you to make it, by clicking and dragging, you can make them bigger and smaller. Undo that. 
And then finally, there's this copy button, or clone button, which creates a second copy of the object. And in fact, it's exactly the same effect, if I drag this over, as if I just created a second object or instantiated a second object exactly the same way. And you can see over here on the on our object tree, actually, it's called it the same thing. It's Snowman 2 again. came back, so I'm going to delete Snowman 2. Goodbye, Snowman 2. There he goes. All right. Now, I don't want just a snowman in this one. I also want a snow woman. So I'm going to click the snow woman. I'm going to add an instance to this world of the snow woman. And you can see one of the disadvantages of the add instance to the world is it has this tendency sometimes to put them where you don't want them or where you can't get at them. So I'll see if I can grab that snow woman. There she is. And drag her out like that. Okay. Our next step is we want to manipulate these two objects. And what this exercise is going to be about is can we manipulate these objects so that the two people, the two snow people, are staring at each other. And before I get into manipulating objects, I want to show you this up here, the top right. I want to switch it over to quad view. So I'm going to click this little radio button here. Okay. We're going to get quad view. Let's scroll back out. And that splits it into... Um, four separate views like this. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to manipulate this and get it so the two. Now you can move the objects in any one of these views. See, I can grab a person there. You can see I'm moving it in all of the views like that. Okay. Okay, I've got to undo, put that back. All right. What I want to do is I want to get them so the two objects are facing each other. Well, it's nice to get, right now actually this kind of worked out all right, but we can get a little bit nicer views on each of the views by using these two buttons, the hand tool and the magnifying or the zoom in and out tool. So using those two tools, I can move the scene around. I'm not moving the objects. I'm actually just moving the whole scene. Or I can zoom in and out. I know it's just a plus sign, but it's actually both a zoom in and out. What you do is you click and hold, and if you pull, move the mouse towards you, you'll zoom in. And if you move the mouse away from you, you will zoom out. Okay. So I'm going to manipulate each of these scenes so that I have a good view of the objects in every one of these scenes. Actually, that one's probably pretty good the way it is. And now I want to turn it so that they're facing each other. So that's easy to do. I want to use this turn left and right button. And I'm going to manipulate the objects in my top view in this case. Which view you want to use might change depending upon um, what you want to do. But in this case, I think just using the top one works nice. And the arms are a good indicator of exactly where they're facing. So I can turn them. Whoa, come here, you. Whoa, spun a little too far. And we'll move them so that they're a little more friendly. There we go. Staring right at each other. Okay. And now I'm going to hit the done. I'm going to take a look. Okay. Whoops, I didn't mean to hit the done. I'm sorry. Let's go back to add objects. Get that back. I meant to actually just take it off of quad view. So I'll go back to single view. And the last buttons I want to show you before we're done this particular exercise, are these buttons down here. These are your camera control buttons. There's a virtual camera that you're looking at these at this world through. And uh, these buttons allow you to manipulate these ca this camera. And the buttons are meant to emulate the kind of controls you would have on a real camera. So first of all, we have a move the camera up, down, left, and right button, which is over here on here. So I can move the camera down. I can move the camera up. I can move it left. I can move it to the right. You can imagine that this camera perhaps is on a crane. It's a way to sort of think about it. Over here we have two buttons that move, that not move the camera left and right, but turn or what we call pan the camera left and right. So imagine this camera sitting on a tripod, and we just keep the camera in the same spot, but just turn it to the right or turn it to the left. We also have a move the camera in and move the camera out button. So this allows me to move the camera in, move the camera out. And I'll show you something. You can actually click and hold and then move the mouse around and you can affect how quickly you move out or how quickly you move in. And you, you can notice that I'm actually, you can click on more than one button at the same time. And then finally, these buttons on here is the tilt control. Again, imagine this camera sitting on a tri tripod. You can tilt the camera back so it's looking more up, or you can tilt the camera forward so it ends up looking down. And what I want you to do is to play around with the controls to get yourself a nice little kind of medium close-up of your two lovely snow people. And I'm just noticing, I think in my manipulating, I kind of 
moved you know, one of them way up or one of them down. So we'll just do these kind of things. I think they're supposed to be about the same height. That's pretty good. All right. When you feel like happy with it, you can click the Done button. So here we are. We're done. Okay. You can also, if you like, click the Play button. But the thing to notice is, unlike the exercise that we were doing before this, these snow people don't do anything because we haven't given them any instructions. And in fact, that's what we're going to be spending most of this course with, is how do we give some instructions so that we can get our objects to do what we want them to do. But for now, we're just practicing creating the scene. Okay. I'm going to do a final save. Since I've already given it a name, I just have to say Save World, and I'm done.